A good quality plug starts long before anything hits the greenhouse bench, and that fundamentally starts on the sewing line. The first step in that process is getting your trays filled correctly and evenly. Before you put any media into your plug tray, you wanna make sure that the moisture level is appropriate. On the one to five scale, you wanna target about moisture level two. So not dark in color, not heavy. You shouldn't be able to squeeze more than maybe a tiny drop out at most, but you don't want it to be bone dry and really light in color. Plug media that's too dry going into the tray makes it really hard to re-wet it and it'll actually rob the seed of moisture that it needs to start growing and get moving. If you're filling multiple trays at a time before you're sowing, make sure that you stack your trays offset so the bottom of the plug cells on the tray above aren't pushing down and compacting the cells in the tray below. You also want to make sure that there aren't any ridges along the tray. You want to make sure that if you look at the bottom, all the cells are filled all the way to the bottom so that you don't have big air pockets. If you don't catch partially filled cells as you're filling your plug trays, you'll start to see a checkerboard appearance as your plugs start to dry down on the bench. So prevent that, make sure that you're getting even fill in all your plug cells from the get-go. Once you've got trays properly filled, next step is dibbling. So dibbling ensures that the seeds are gonna be right in the center of each of those cells. Make sure that your dibble is uniform depth, whether you're doing it by hand or if you're using automation and have a nice roller dibbler like this. Make sure that your dibbles are uniform depth across the tray and that they're appropriate to the size tray that you're using in terms of cell size, as well as depth for the size seed you're using. Larger seed typically needs a deeper dibble. Once your trays are dibbled, now we move on to seed placement. And if you dibbled your cells properly, it'll actually make things a lot easier. Seeds will naturally fall right into the center of the cell. But as you're going down the line, spot check. If your intention is to only sow one seed per cell, double check for singulation and make sure that seed placement is actually right in the middle. If seed placement is a little bit off, this can actually have a downstream effect and make it more difficult to pull your plugs when it comes time to transplant, or it can cause lack of uniformity and germination and ultimately grow out. As you're going, you should always be double checking for the proper number of seed per cell. If you're not getting the correct number of seed per cell, double check your seeder and do any spot maintenance as needed. Once you're certain that you've got the right number of seeds per cell and that seeds are right in the middle of each plug cell, then you can move them on down the line. And the next question is to cover or not to cover. Some species require light for germination. So look to your crop culture guidelines to make that determination. If they don't require light and they would benefit from having a little bit of cover over the top, you can use a coarse to a medium texture vermiculite Apply a generous layer over the top, but not so much that there is a mountain. Once your plug trays are watered in, you should be able to see the ridges along the plug tray. And finally, cover or no cover, the last step is watering your seeds in. Some people like to wait until they get to their greenhouse if they're bench germinating, but best practice is to water in your seed right at the end of the sow line. And keep in mind, there's a few different functions of each of, these, each of these passes through water emitters, whether you have little individual streams like this, or if you have fan type water emitters. The first emitter glues the seed in place. The second set of emitters adds moisture immediately around the seed that it'll imbibe and start, use to germinate and start growing. The third and any subsequent sets of water emitters really just adds more moisture to the rest of the plug cell. And once your trays are watered in, sometimes it's good to do some spot checking and make sure that you're actually getting enough water on that tray before it goes into the germ chamber or out into the greenhouse. Generally speaking, for raw seed forms, you want to target about 900 grams to 1,000 grams in most standard size trays from a 288 to a 512 and if you're using pelleted seed form, you want to have a little bit more moisture going into that cell. So looking at 1,100 grams to maybe 1,200 grams or 1,300. And after everything's watered in, you want to get your freshly sown trays into the germ chamber or out onto the greenhouse bench ASAP. Generally speaking, headhouses are pretty dry. 
and you don't want to cause you don't want to cause premature dry down because that's going to impact seed germination, it'll cause lack of uniformity, or it may even terminate the seed if it sits around in your head house long enough. And while you've seen a lot of automated seeding in this video, remember that all these core concepts apply whether you're using a drum seeder like this or if you're doing everything by hand. So from the time you're filling trays to the time you're watering in and setting your freshly sown seed down in a germination chamber or on the bench, make sure you're hitting all these key steps to ensure good uniform germination and good plug performance from the get-go.